Hello all, this is Collector Man. I collect all things movie, TV, and entertainment related, including horror, which is my favorite. First of all, I just want to say that this video is going up a few days after Halloween, but I hope all of you who celebrate had a good one. I tried to make the best out of my Halloween. I had a lot of fun watching all of your Halloween related videos, um, but admittedly I am behind on some of your videos. Um, there's been an illness that I've been dealing with, but I am back and I will be catching up on your videos and I'm excited to show you these two movie making of books of films that I really love and the first one you've been looking at for about a minute now and that is Pure Imagination, the making of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and this was written by director Mel Stewart with Josh Young. And I'll just be flipping through this book as I'm talking. Um, this is a very nice book. It has glossy pages. It tells all about the production and has behind the scenes photos. Um, I still remember as a kid being in the store and seeing Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory on VHS clamshell and asked my dad to buy it and I fell in love with it some behind the scenes shots of the cast, the Oompa Loompas. And an interesting fact about the making of this film is that the Quaker Oats Company put up a lot of money for the budget so they could make a Wonka bar out of their Quaker Oats factory, but that never came to fruition. Uh, this movie didn't do that well at the box office when it was released. And also, Roald Dahl um, wasn't too keen on this adaptation. Um, I've often wondered if he would have liked the Tim Burton remake better. But um, as far as casting goes, I think Gene Wilder was a pretty much a perfect choice at that time. Um, here is a Pure Imagination uh, lyric sheet from the production of the film. So this book is pretty comprehensive for only about 120 pages. Here are some behind the scenes shots of Gene Wilder during the Pure Imagination number, the choreography that was involved. And I just love reading movie making of books because I love all the technical ins and outs of movie making, the you know location scouting, um, auditioning processes, costumes, sets, everything. And of course the music in this film is iconic and very well done um, as well as the there is the artwork that was used on the VHS clamshell edition. This is the original hand-painted poster art. And um, yeah, just about the music, the um, Pure Imagination, I've Got a Golden Ticket. Um, there's just several iconic musical numbers and songs in this film. And that's about it. Um, there are some shots of the children um, from the film and what they look like now and what they're doing now. And we end on a shot of Wonka in the factory. Um, so I really recommend this book. It's a really good book to have if you're a movie fan, if you're a movie musical fan, or if you're just a plain fan of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The next book that I have is Batman, the official book of the movie, Tim Burton's Batman from 1989. This book was released in 1989. And apparently it sold very well because it went into paperback twice. Um, and the coloring on the Batman... On the Batman lettering was changed to blue. And then it was changed to a slightly more yellow color rather than gold. And anyone who knows the channel or knows me knows that I love Batman. And especially the Tim Burton Batman films. Um, they are my favorite Tim Burton Batman films. Batman Returns is my favorite, but I also love Batman. 
Um, Jack Nicholson as the Joker. It's great. And um, this is a really good book. This is a foreword by Tim Burton as well as John Peters who produced. And not only do you get the making of the movie, but you also get some backstory on the Batman character and the creation of the Batman character by Bob Kane as well as Bill Finger. So that's really nice to see. Um, they were very adamant since Batman made his debut in Detective Comics in 1939 that the film come out on the 50th anniversary in 1989. So yeah, here's some cool stuff from the comics. Some behind the scenes shots of uh, Michael Keaton and Jack Nicholson as well as Tim Burton. And what's great about this book as opposed to the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory book is that this also has uh, storyboards and concept art which I really love. There's Joker taking a spill into the vat of chemicals. And here's some concept art for the Batcave with all of these screens and um, technical equipment that's in there. And here are some storyboards, which I find very interesting. I just think it's really cool to see all of the talent that comes in to play in order to make a film, especially a film on the scale of Batman. And there is some more concept art for the stealing of the Joker's balloons. And we will just flip through the rest of this. Um, I think there's some more interesting storyboards and concept art that I would just like to show. Um, here we are. Here is some storyboards, some colorized storyboards. Really cool stuff to see that artwork that would later come to life on screen. There is the downing of the Batwing by the Joker when he pulls out his very long gun. There is a concept art for Axis Chemicals. Behind the scenes shot of the Batmobile. The Batman and Batman Returns Batmobile is my favorite Batmobile. I love the look of it. And here are some of Batman's gadgets. The spear gun, the gauntlet, and John Evans who made all of that stuff as well as some of the Joker's um, equipment and weapons. You have the ninja wheel and the batarang. Joker again, um, a little piece on the Joker's costumes which are an iconic part of that. And of course Danny Elfman, the music, it's iconic and fantastic. The Batman theme, um, I love it. And here is some concept art for the Joker's costume. And that's where it ends with the credits from the film. And I hope you all enjoyed this look at two movie making of books of films that I really love. And I hope you all are doing well, and I will see you in the next video.